Imagine a concrete so durable that it remains intact for over 2,000 years, withstanding earthquakes, raging seas, and the passage of time, while modern buildings crack, sink, or collapse in just a few decades. Have you ever wondered why so many contemporary structures fail so quickly, even with all our advanced technology? What are we doing wrong that the ancient Romans, without reinforced steel, mastered to perfection? In this video, you'll uncover the millennia-old secret that made Roman concrete practically indestructible, and why scientists today are still trying to replicate this lost formula of antiquity. Get ready for a revelation that could change. The way you see engineering forever. But before we dive into these stories and curiosities of the Roman Empire, make sure you're subscribed to our channel and hit the bell icon. That way you won't miss any of our videos packed with secrets and surprises about ancient Rome. We've talked about a revolutionary new material, but do you know what existed before it? Let's go back to the origins to understand the very first Roman building techniques. The first attempts to build an empire. At the start of its history, Rome was just a small community of shepherds settled along the banks of the Tiber River. The houses were extremely rudimentary, built mainly with clay and wood. The idea of constructing something grand and resilient was still far off, but the need for shelter and protection forced the earliest Romans to get creative. Clay, being abundant in the region, was used to fashion simple walls and structures. Molded and then sun-dried, it served as a form of natural brick. Although limited in strength, it was essential for the initial development of Roman engineering. Without these basic experiments, it's unlikely there would have been the knowledge needed to create anything more lasting. As the city grew, so did its demands. The Romans wanted better bridges, roads, and fortifications. Thus, the first attempts to improve on what already existed began. Mixing clay with other materials and experimenting with new drying techniques. Rudimentary as they were, these trials pointed toward a promising future. We can say that in these first constructions, the spirit of innovation was born, later defining Rome as a colossal empire. Fearless in experimentation, the Romans laid the groundwork for discoveries that would unfold in the centuries to come. After mastering clay, the Romans took a leap forward by standardizing the shape of their buildings. The real game-changer came with the use of bricks and the brilliant mind of an architect named Vitruvius. The arrival of bricks and Vitruvius's influence the emergence of fired bricks represented a considerable advance. Instead of merely molding and drying clay by hand, the Romans realized they could standardize the size and shape of these blocks. This accelerated construction and made buildings more robust. Kilns were established for firing bricks, ensuring even greater durability. In this process, Vitruvius played a crucial role. In his work, the Ten Books on Architecture, he described various types of bricks and their ideal uses. Vitruvius studied raw materials, soil types, and even climatic conditions that could affect brick drying and firing, demonstrating a precursor vision of civil engineering. Perhaps most interestingly, these standardizations became common knowledge. Among builders across the Italian peninsula, what was once an almost empirical craft evolved into a technical manual. This step elevated Roman construction to a new level of organization and quality. Alongside this refinement, the desire to experiment also grew. With a solid brick foundation, architects and workers felt confident mixing in other materials. And it was in this context that the idea of a more robust mortar, more versatile than sun-dried clay, began to take shape. Have you ever wondered how Vitruvius's studies influenced monumental constructions? If you find this detail fascinating, leave us a like so we can keep bringing you impactful stories. With the popularization of bricks, ancient Rome was ready to take another leap toward its legacy of grandeur. And it's here that a mixture capable of changing everything first appeared. 
The hunger for new techniques, the birth of concrete, the evolution from simple clay to more complex mixtures was inevitable. Roman engineers realized that by combining lime with sand and rock fragments, they could create something that, once hardened, offered unprecedented solidity. This prototype concrete became the subject of intense research, even if initially done in an empirical manner. The process required much trial and error. Sometimes more lime was added, sometimes the sand ratio was reduced, and so on. Each region had distinct geological characteristics, making the research all the more challenging. Yet the ambition to build grand temples, aqueducts, and walls drove the Romans to persevere. These early mixtures worked very well for foundations, which demanded greater strength. It wasn't long before they began erecting higher walls and experimenting with curved structures like arches and vaults, architectural elements that would become hallmarks of the Roman Empire. It was at this moment that Rome gained a reputation for innovation. After all, new constructions began popping up everywhere, from humble homes to major military works. This first rudimentary concrete not only provided sturdiness, but also the ability to shape daring projects. The foundations were set, but the real magic touch that made concrete the game-changer in Roman architecture came from a fascinating process involving limestone. The transformation of limestone into building magic, the great secret began to emerge when the Romans discovered that burning limestone produced quicklime. This lime, when slaked with water, turned into calcium hydroxide. When mixed with other aggregates, calcium carbonate crystals formed, consistently strengthening the mixture. This process was far from simple. It required special kilns to calcine limestone at high temperatures, a knowledge of which rock types yielded the best quicklime, boosting durability. When this lime mortar was combined with stone fragments, it produced a blend capable of resisting. The test of time, and even heat, historical records mention buildings that survived fires thanks to this material. For an ever-expanding city, any advantage that reduced collapse risk was welcome. What was once an experiment became a standardized process, replicated across the empire's various constructions. The magic lay in the precise proportions and in knowing which materials to use in which part, heavier stones for foundations, lighter ones for vaults. But there was still a cherry on top to push Roman concrete to unprecedented durability, and it came from volcanic ash. Bodzolan, the volcanic ash secret to durability. The discovery of Pozzolana, a volcanic ash found near Pozzuoli in Italy, was a colossal milestone. The Romans realized that mixing this ash with lime created a hydraulic cement that could set even underwater a revolutionary advancement for its time. With Pozzolana, concrete became resistant not only to weather and heat, but also to moisture. This opened the door to coastal structures, river bridges, and even underground sewage systems that were constantly wet. The chemical reaction in this mixture didn't rely solely on evaporation to harden. Instead, it retained water in its structure, forming a solid, long-lasting binder. This capability allowed Roman constructions to endure for centuries, often without major cracks or damage. It's important to note that this technology raised construction standards to unimaginable heights. Whenever the Romans expanded to new regions, they attempted to replicate these techniques with local materials. Yet few places had pozzolana of the same quality, further emphasizing the advantage of building near volcanic zones. Did you know this intriguing detail about volcanic ash use? Share your thoughts in the comments. We want to hear your take. With all this technology at their disposal, the Romans were ready to erect structures that seemed to defy gravity. And it's here that monuments spanning millennia come into view. The concrete that created eternal monuments, 
When you think of Rome, images of the Colosseum or the Roman Forum often come to mind, yet a prime example of concrete excellence is the Pantheon, built to honour the Roman gods, its massive dome, without any metal reinforcement, was an unprecedented architectural feat. And even more astonishing, it still stands virtually intact to this day. The brilliance of this structure lies in the gradual mix of aggregates. As the dome rose, builders replaced heavier stones with lighter ones, like pumice, reducing pressure on lower levels. This weight distribution, combined with the strength of the concrete, ensured incredible stability. The oculus at the dome's centre, a circular opening about 27 feet across, allows light and even rain to enter. Even with this aperture, the dome remains solid, thanks in part to the quality and perfect curing of the concrete, its living proof of Roman engineers' precision. Elsewhere in the empire, from Gaul to North Africa, smaller yet significant, monuments also employed Roman concrete. Some still stand today, reminding us how Rome elevated construction to an art form. If the Pantheon showcases Roman creativity on land, Caesarea Maritima reveals their boldness at sea. Let's explore the story behind this magnificent port. Caesarea Maritima, a port of dreams and challenges. Under King Herod the Great's orders, Caesarea Maritima emerged as an ambitious port city. The idea was to create a premier Mediterranean harbor, to achieve this, the Romans deployed their greatest weapon, hydraulic concrete that would set underwater. Huge wooden boxes or barges were filled with concrete and then submerged at exact locations to form the breakwaters. It was a spectacular sight. Laborers building artificial sea barriers resilient, enough to withstand waves and storms, ensuring safe anchorage for ships. However, not everything went as planned. Archaeological studies indicate that parts of the mix didn't have enough time to set before being battered by tides. Moreover, the region sat on a seismic fault. Earthquakes and geological shifts caused the port structures to settle unevenly on the seabed over centuries, rendering it unusable by the 6th century. Despite these challenges, Caesarea Maritima stands as proof of Roman ambition to extend their engineering to the most hostile environments. Today, the submerged ruins tell a story of both triumph and failure, reminding us that nature rarely bends to human designs. The Forgotten Knowledge and the End of an Era With the Roman Empire's decline, a vast network of technical and scientific knowledge was lost over the centuries. Wars, economic crises, and political fragmentation divided the empire into smaller regions, each facing its own struggles. The art of producing resilient concrete, once widespread in imperial constructions, ceased to be a priority. Roman techniques were replaced by more rudimentary methods or simply abandoned, as maintaining sophisticated processes required an organizational infrastructure that no longer existed. Many surviving Roman buildings became quarries for later constructions. The Colosseum itself was stripped of marble and stone for churches and medieval buildings. In this climate, there was little interest in preserving ancient engineering secrets. It wasn't until early modern times that scholars revisited ancient texts and studied ruins to understand how the Romans achieved such greatness. But the story doesn't end with these techniques abandonment. Centuries later, humanity rediscovered how to create advanced concretes, learning valuable lessons from the ruins. Rediscovering the formula for durability, the invention of Portland cement by Joseph Aspdin in 1824, marked the resurgence of modern concrete, though still lacking in some ways compared to Roman millennia-old structures. Researchers asked what was missing to match ancient durability. 
scientists began analyzing Roman concrete fragments and found traces of pozzolana and various types of limestone. They discovered that internal chemical reactions continued for centuries, sealing cracks and making the structure even stronger over time, a true self-healing property unknown to ordinary concrete. In recent years, engineering projects have incorporated studies on materials that mimic this behavior. Tests combine volcanic ash or industrial byproducts similar to pozzolana, hoping to recreate Roman-style durability. This process of materials archaeology not only honors Rome's legacy, but also teaches us how to build more sustainable and long-lasting structures, reducing maintenance costs and environmental impact from constant repairs. We've reached our final topic, but Roman concrete story lives on in every modern building inspired by its techniques. Let's reflect on this timeless legacy. The legacy that bridges past and future. When we look at the Pantheon or other centuries-old ruins, we realize that Roman concrete was more than a building material. It was a bridge between generations. It embodies the efforts of architects, engineers and laborers who dared to push beyond their era's limits. Today, researchers study samples of these monuments to revive that level of constructive efficiency. There are even military and space projects exploring the potential use of similar concrete in extreme environments, like underwater bases or future colonies on other planets. But beyond materials, Roman concrete offers a lesson in persistence and innovation. It was forged through centuries of trial, error, and steady improvement, proof that human ingenuity can reach unimaginable heights. In every modern structure, we see traces of this glorious past, whether in shaping techniques or in the quest for new mixes that resist time. The Roman legacy endures, linking one age to the next, making this story of concrete truly inspiring. After this complete journey through Roman concrete's history, it's clear that this invention was a cornerstone of the Empire's success. From humble clay huts to Vitruvius's bricks and the addition of volcanic pozzolana, each chapter reflects Roman ambition and genius. Though the empire fell and some knowledge was lost, its surviving structures invite us to learn from the past and build a stronger future. If you enjoyed this time travel journey and want more fascinating stories, subscribe to the channel, leave a like and share this video with your friends. You'll help us keep delivering top quality historical content. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video about ancient Rome and its grand empire.